taking events in the context that the U.S. has been putting the missile defense system in Poland and Romania, and they try to say it's meant for the Iranian missiles, but, you know, I mean, who knows what it's truly meant for, you know. Um, it, the Russians take it as a, as a doctrine against them, like a first-strike doctrine, you know, uh, to take out their second-strike capabilities of the Russian nuclear forces, you know. Yes. And uh, two years ago, there was that conference in Moscow where the Russian, uh, I forgot his name, but he was the general chief of staff. He said that Poland and uh, Romania missile defense systems are first strike efforts against Russia, and they will not allow them to be built. Mm -hmm. like he stated that clearly. And, yeah, uh, no, it's, a, it's, a real, it's a real question, isn't it? When, does, when do defense preparations not really serve our best interests? When do they provoke counter reactions from other people? When do they provoke instability from other people? When do they undermine our security? And certainly, I think at this point, when the... American government is openly fomenting revolution in the Ukraine, in the Crimea, attacking Russia's vital strategic, military, economic interests there. That is a very dangerous, very provocative thing. I think it is very much akin to Russia trying to put missiles in Cuba. I think that's what's happening, and I think that's probably the way they view it. It's a very, very dangerous game that Victoria Nuland, the State Department, John Kerry, and Obama are playing right now. It is, it is. You know, you go back to 90 and 91 when the Soviet Union disintegrated, um, you know, uh, we may have had a chance for world peace, but you had the emergence of the neocons in the Bush administration, Bush Sr., you know, adopted the New American Century Doctrine, which is, I, I think, the whole, whole thing comes back to that, you know, um, where, uh, you know, the idea to create the world empire uh, based on special relationships between Great Britain and U.S., like if you didn't have that special relationship, you weren't going to be included, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, uh, Bush Sr., he... Uh, I think he kind of proceeded with uh, regime change. You know, uh, he wouldn't. So, if, if you're not going to submit to the idea of world empire, they're going to change your re regime. You can see it, it happened in Iraq, Libya, yeah. Syria. They wanted to do it in Iran, um, and it, it, it's just an encroachment on Russia and China and the eastward expansion of the EU and NATO's forces, uh, which we see now. You know, happening in Ukraine, basically. You're right. Thank uh, you very much, John. I appreciate it. It's a very dangerous game they're playing. I, like I said before, I, I know that there are people in the Ukraine. They want an honest government. They're tired of the corruption. They're tired of the puppets. But we also see that the American government is playing a very dangerous game of escalation. Let's go to Bob in Michigan. Bob, you wanted to talk about the Ukraine? Yeah, thanks for taking my call. This is pretty obvious. I just wanted to add to the other comments on this Ukraine situation. I just hope we have enough people left uh, in the flag officer department that have their head on straight. Uh, and the rest of them, I think, are dealing in some kind of alternate reality of what they're doing. Uh, we really want cool heads to prevail. And I think the, the thing in Syria um, I think that was the case. I just don't know how many people we have left at the top that can uh, have the, uh, not just the cool heads, but the idea that we really don't want to stir this pot up. This, this has a potential of getting really ugly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a very dangerous game they're playing. Thank you. Let's go to uh, Ronald in California. Ronald, you had a comment about the Ukraine? Yes, hi. I just want to reiterate people who may have been listening later that you review, you actually revealed you have documents saying the State Department and uh, eBay's Pierre funded the, let's get it right, the Center UA in, in Ukraine. That's the exact organization they, fund, they funded to, to get the revolutionaries st stirred up. Yes. The, the Center UA, you said? I believe that's what Paul said, yeah. I'm not sure of the exact organization. I, I'll, I'll go with that, but yeah, go ahead. And so I, I want to talk about the uh, FDA also, but I want to finish on Ukraine. So I think it, this is a case like when Nixon, I don't know if you're old enough to remember Nixon. Yeah, I'm afraid so. <laughs> okay. It, when, when Nixon went mad and, and he was about to, let's just say Obama's going mad. Mm -hmm. I think we need, as in Nixon's case, we need people like Senator Boxer and Senator McCaskill and Senator Gillibrand because... Uh, the women, women senators are supposedly strong nowadays. We need some liberal women Democrat senators to go to Obama and say, look, you are going mad, sir. And we are uh, women Democratic liberal senators. And we, we can't have this militarism. They have to literally go into his office and say, sir, you're going mad. Yeah, you would hope that somebody in his party, whether it's male or female, would call him on the glaring contradictions between...
being a transparent candidate, between having the rule of law and the lawless, violent regime that the Obama administration has come to be. But unfortunately, there's this spectrum between the two different teams. We're going to be right back with more of your calls. Stay tuned. 259-9231-800. Clean water at home, clean water at the office, clean water on the go. The Berkey Guy has a Berkey water filtration model for anywhere you are and one that fits any budget. Thousands of satisfied customers can't be wrong. For free shipping within the U.S., go to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. Helping thousands prepare since 2005, GoBerkey.com. Uncover a simple privacy loophole that can stop the NSA spying thugs in their tracks at privacylockdown.com. The NSA has already shut down hundreds of sites, and the truth be told, they could shut down this operation at any time. See, the privacy loophole I'm about to show you allows you to make all your sensitive information disappear in the next 30 days or less. Go to privacylockdown.com now to take your life off the grid and see the loophole in the NSA and FBI spying machine before they close the loophole forever. Go to privacylockdown.com. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record. Reports documented a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base. Nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield Nascent Iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield Nascent Iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit and carding to a private bank, having it lent back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. We are not here to scare you or fill your mind with images of terror. There's enough of that already. We are survivalbagsinc.com, a veteran-owned company. We specialize in survival supplies, bags, and packs. In most cases, our survival bags, loaded with emergency food, water, and supplies, ship out in 24 hours or less, and prices start as low as 60 bucks. Go to survivalbagsinc.com, and thank you for supporting a veteran-owned American business. Survivalbagsinc.com. Our mission is to help you survive. Big business has discovered the preparedness market, and that makes it difficult to know where to go and who to trust. MyPatriotSupply.com is owned and operated by patriots just like you, has the best prices on storable food, non-GMO seeds, water filtration devices, home canning equipment, survival and self-reliance books, and more. MyPatriotSupply.com has old-fashioned values and the absolute best customer service in the industry. Look for the deal of the day, unique affordable survival supplies that fit anyone's budget. Get same-day shipping on all orders and free shipping on orders over $49. Call 866-229-0927. 866-229-0927. Or visit MyPatriotSupply.com for emergency preparedness, self-reliance, and food independence. Shop with a name you know and a name you can trust. Before it's time to survive, it's time to prepare. MyPatriotSupply.com. to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex Jones. We're taking your calls and the number is 800-259-9231. We've been talking about a wide variety of topics. We've been talking about the Ukraine, what's going on there, the dangerous game that's being played by the State Department and the Obama regime, the brinksmanship that could bring us into a third world war. We've talked about the corruption of the FDA, the concern that they are losing the information war, the fact that they want to spy 
on all social networks, your comments, your observations. They want to close that loop of control. They want to know if the lines that they're feeding you, if you're really buying that, are you really accepting that? So they've put out a RFP. They want someone to uh, come up with a business model that they're going to pay them to do that, to try to move your opinion. That's right. It really is an information war. Now, we've talked about the Internet of Things. We've now got the Internet of Cops coming. Now, the Internet of Things, in case you don't remember or in case you don't know, that's the sorts of things that General Petraeus talked about, how he said your refrigerator, your appliances in your kitchen are going to be listening to you. That's where they have the competition that's going on between Cisco and IBM about creating the Internet of Things on the actual physical highway actually turning your roads, the actual physical roads, into an information highway. You know, they came out with yet another one of these requests for proposals where they wanted a license plate database. That was the Department of Homeland Security. We reported on that, and a few days later they said, oh, never mind, uh, we're not going to do that anymore. But at the same time, we see these articles about the competition between Cisco and IBM to actually embed the Internet on the highway, along with license plate readers, cameras that they can send to each other. And, of course, they want to monitor, guess what, your social media content. They want to know what you're talking about, just like the FDA. The government is very interested in you. You know, they just want a little bit to know a little bit about you for their files. Remember the uh, song from Simon and Garfunkel? Now they've got the Internet of Cops coming, and this is an article from a company called Motherboard. Dot vice dot com. That was their article. They said it's called FirstNet. It's pitched as a state-of-the-art communications network for paramedics, firemen, and law enforcement at the federal, state, and local level. It's going to give cops on the street unprecedented technological powers, possibly hand over even more intimate data, you can bet, about our lives to the highest ends of government and its intelligence agencies. And while the system has already been tested in a handful of states, 2014 will likely see it rolled out farther. First net is what they're calling it. You know, this is, we, we see them doing this. We see them getting their own highly secure internet. At the same time, they're talking about having the power to turn off our phones because they want to watch you. They think that they have the right to watch you, whether you're in public or whether you're in private. But if we videotape them or if we talk about what they are in the middle of doing, if they're committing a crime, if they're acting illegally, they want the power to basically shut off your phone, shut off an entire area. They want to be able to see if there's a lot of traffic being uploaded from a particular area because maybe there's a demonstration. Maybe there's some kind of illegal activity going on there by the government. They want to be able to selectively shut down cell phone service to that area, Wi-Fi service to that area because they don't want you to know. That's the information war that we're in. That's a very, very powerful thing. We see videos over and over again about the police overreacting, shooting people, beating people, killing people. It's happening on a regular basis. Why? Because people have the ability to record this now. So they want to shut that down. Let's go to one of our callers. We've got uh, someone on the line, Jerome in Texas. You want to talk about a demonstration in D.C.? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. All right. Uh, yeah, I've been w watching for a long time InfoWars and Alex Jones since I lived in Los Angeles uh, years ago. And... Uh, I recently uh, retired from Universal Studios in, in Hollywood, moved to Austin, Texas, because it's the only place left that I consider the true America. And uh, I recently came upon uh, uh, Colonel O'Reilly's uh, web website called Operation American Spring. Have you heard of it? Vaguely, yeah. Uh, well, he's trying to get millions of people to, to come to Washington to protest the uh, the NSA and uh, the unfair treatment of uh, veterans and the restoration of uh, of the Constitution of the United States to what it used to be. Well, I think that's so, a very healthy thing. You know, it had a big effect. It was actually the origin of the Tea Parties when they had that uh, demonstration in Washington on September 12th protesting the bailout, the crony capitalism that was TARP. I think our government leaders need to hear from us. They need to see us exercising our constitutional rights to petition them for a redress of grievances. And we've got a lot to be aggrieved about. We're going to be right back, taking more of your calls, going over some more news. Stay tuned.